Hi Des, I'm Mitko and this is Forever. In our previous video we managed to successfully set up a simple player that traverses our generated level. And today we're going to look at custom paths. But wait a minute, this isn't looking good, it's not supposed to happen. Okay so here's the deal, last time you saw that one of the sequences inside the level generator was disabled. But for this video I have enabled it. This is the second sequence which contains a custom segment. And for those of you who haven't watched the Getting Started video, a custom segment is a segment that is actually not bent along a generated path, but is spawned as it is. So for example, these segments here are actually straight segments that get extruded along a path. But this here, this segment is actually a custom segment and it looks like this by default. So it basically remains unchanged. Now what's happening when a player enters a custom segment is it traverses a segment in a straight line from the entrance towards the exit. So something like this. And now you can see that the player is going to continue moving along the generated segments properly, but we definitely don't like the traversal behavior of the custom segment. So how do we fix this issue? Well, this is what custom paths are for. And in the case of custom segments, they are actually a lifesaver. So this is our custom segment here, it makes a 90 degree turn and what I'm gonna do now is go to the inspector, find the level segment component and inside it locate the custom paths fold out. Expand it and I get this add path button. Click it once and as soon as I do this a new custom path object called lane 1 appears in the custom paths list and you can see a custom path being drawn in the C view. Now this path is not a game object. This path is part of the level segment component and during runtime it can be used by runners to change the way they are traversing the level. Custom paths can be used both for custom segments and extruded segments and for extruded segments custom paths will be extruded with the rest of the segment. So after clicking add path a default path is being created. This path only contains two control points and you can select either one of them by going inside the select point menu and selecting point 1 or point 2. Tangents are automatically generated and since our entrance points forward and our exit points to the right, our tangents are oriented in these directions and so that we get a turning path. Now you can actually select points by also clicking on them inside the scene view. But right now the custom entrance and the custom exit are drawn over the points so you can't see them. So let's create another point. In order to add a new point to the custom path, you can click insert point at start or insert point at end. The first option is going to insert a point right after the first point. And the second option is going to insert a point right before the last point. But in this case, because we have only two points, both buttons are going to do the same thing. Now what happened is, a third point got created and its tangents are a little bit big and so the path got deformed. Don't worry about it, we can fix this. Let's go to modify path. This is a window which offers two path editing operations. The first one is the offset. And for example, we can choose to offset the paths like this. And the second one is just a button, which is Auto Tangents. This is going to generate tangents for us automatically. Clicking it is going to smooth out the path. So now I'll click Save and everything is going to be alright. Okay, so now we have a path with three points. And now clicking Insert Point at Start is going to insert point here. And clicking Insert Point at End is going to insert a point here. We can also delete points by clicking the X button next to the selected point in the inspector. The points have a couple of tangent types. The default tangent type is called smooth mirrored. So when you move one of the tangents, the other one is going to mirror. Both tangents will have the same length. Broken is going to allow us to set a unique tangent for each side of the point. And smooth free is like smooth mirrored, but will allow us to have different lengths for the tangents. Now after we've finished editing the path, we can close it by right clicking on the path and choosing close. And then one last thing before we finish, use the main path drop down and select lane 1 as the main path. This is going to tell the segment that it has a unique path which needs to overwrite the level segment evaluation so that instead of getting a straight line connecting the entrance and exit, this custom path is going to be used. Now hit save and let's test the game. And here we go. Now our player is doing something really weird and don't worry about this, we'll talk about it. So what our player just did is it banked. This is because our custom path has normals pointing in the wrong directions. To fix this, go inside the inspector, expand the custom paths, select the custom path we just made, select the second point because this one seems to be the problematic one, and from the menu here, select normals. You will see this circle here. 
This is the normal of the point. This means traversing the path at this point here will set our player's transform up to match this direction here. And this is what just happened. So we can edit the normal like this by just clicking and dragging it around. And we can actually make it even worse. Let's, let's set it to point downwards and see how this goes. And it definitely doesn't look good. So we know how to fix this now. Let's go inside the custom path, select point two, select the normals and set the normal to point up. We're done. Now everything works fine. So how can we expand this behavior and make use of custom paths even further? What we can do is add custom paths to the extruded segments. What I'm gonna do now is revert our player to use the lane runner component, which we used last time, and the story of player script. So here we are, we have the lane runner component set to traverse the level with 30 units, we have to set its player to on, we have 3 lanes starting at the second one, and here we see use custom paths. Now if I click it and play the game, nothing is really going to change. This is because the existing segments don't have custom paths, well except for the custom segment. But as soon as a single custom path is available, our player is going to use this custom path in order to traverse the segment. So let's get the first segment inside the scene and see what we can do about it. Let's say I have a bunch of rocks in the middle of the scene like this and we would like to have a path that kind of goes around them in order to allow the player to escape them. And we'd like to have a path that kind of goes around these rocks. What I'm gonna do now is select the segment, custom paths, add a path, and by the way, editing the paths of extruded segments is not going to let you move the path control points outside of the segment bounds. Keep that in mind. Now we need to add another point. So at start and let's make it so that it kind of does this. Maybe a little bit more and also reduce the size to 0 0.1. I'll tell you what the size does in a minute. So here we have this path here that goes around this rock. And I don't know if you noticed, but we don't have the main path drop down here because this is an extruded level segment. And extruded level segments don't need a main path because they already have a path and this path will be evaluated. So let's click save and check out what we've done. You can see that our player automatically goes around these rocks and then goes back to the center. You can also check it out in the scene view. Oops, we hit a tree. And what reducing that point size did was that it reduced the player's lane width. So basically, if I play and I move the player to the left, it is going to move closer to the path as he goes and then move further away. Now let's remove the custom segment from the sequences and see what else we can do with custom paths. We can actually have more than one custom path per segment. So since we have a lane runner that uses three lanes, what we can do is create three unique custom paths for the segment. And the way we do it is by just adding more and more paths. So this would be the first path and I'm going to click modify path. Then using the segment space, move the X 10 units to the left, maybe even 15. Save this and create another path, leave it at the middle and create a third path. And using the modify path panel, move it 15 units to the right. And now we can modify these paths. I just made something that is going to confuse most players. I switched the positions of the paths in the middle part of the segment and I have no idea how this is going to play out. It's probably going to be horrible. But let's check it out. Let's click save, go to the player, make sure use custom paths is enabled, hit play and test. So here's how this looks. It is very weird and now I have to press left in order to move to the next path and I just crashed. But let's reset it and check it out. So just following a single path works like this and what you might have noticed is that my player changes speed which is a little bit unnatural. The reason for that is that we are using the lane runner component and what the lane runner component is going to do when there are custom paths is it is going to map the player's percent inside the level segment, the beginning being 0 and the ending being 1, to the custom paths so that if a custom path is longer and has a lot of turns, this means that the player is going to go through the custom path faster and faster in order to match the time of arrival of the player if it didn't use custom paths. So what we can do about this is instead of using the lane runner component, actually use the custom lane runner component. However, keep in mind that the custom lane runner component only works if there are custom paths. So let's disable the lane runner 
and move over to the custom lane runner. What we would need to do inside the tutorial player is to make it work for the custom lane runner. And thankfully all that we need to do is change lane runner to custom lane runner here and here. Everything else is the same. What we also need to do is either add three custom paths to the rest of the segments or, because I'm lazy, I'm going to remove the first sequence and then remove the second terrain from the second sequence so that the level only generates the terrain one segment. Now we need to again set the speed of the player, make it work in fixed updates on the ridge body and I'm going to leave this like this. The lane switch speed I'm going to set it to 5. Let's see how this plays out. Let's disable the three colliders for now, because they get in the way. And you can see that the player now follows the custom paths with uniform speed. This is it for custom paths, thank you for watching, see you in the next video.